Hello, everybody. How's it going? That was loud. Sorry. Welcome back. <laughs> How are you today? Today. Yes, today we are doing something, something we've kind of done before, but uh, a little bit different as well, because we have a new client, you and I. We're going to try and find them the perfect vacation home, all right? They tell me that uh, they, they really need this in their life right now. They just are desperate to get out there and see the world and have a place that they can call a home away from home. So... We're going to be looking at your vacation homes that you send in. The link is in the description, and the link is pinned in chat right now if you're live watching. And you can submit your Happy Home Showcase, and we will check it out. We're going to check out maybe like two or three of your builds. We're going to tell our client about them. We're going to see what he thinks. And we're going to see, by the end of this, if there's any of them that he would like to make an offer on. That's how this is going to work. Um, if you're thinking, maybe I'll update my Happy Home Showcase and try and get in on this if you're here live. I'm going to tell you right now, and I announced this in Discord earlier, you might want to consider that this particular client is a bit on a budget. Okay, I'm going to warn you right now, this this client, you know, he, he's, he really needs this vacation home from what I understand, and he's, he's going to pay whatever he can afford to pay, all right? So just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind that uh, if you do whip up a vacation home for him to, to look at, you know, budget friendly. That's what we're looking for right now. Um, but all right. Welcome, everybody. How are you? Thank you for being here. Um, hopefully the volume of everything is good. I've been messing with settings in the background for a while. So hopefully everything's sounding good, looking good. Cool. All right. Well, um, we already got some responses here in our happy home form. And again, uh, let me know. You should see that link in the description. Go ahead and fill that out when you get a chance. Throw your happy home showcase code in there. It should start with R-A. Instead of like a dream address that starts with D-A, it should start with R-A. That's the code you're looking for. And uh, yeah, we'll take a look. I already have one here that we can pull up. So why don't we do that? I will go to ID search. And uh, we will type in 573276 Three, seven, one, two. Oh, I hit the B button by accident. I've been playing a lot of my Steam Deck today, and so my brain is backwards. I wish Nintendo would just make all their buttons match all the other controllers in the world. Five, seven, three, two, seven, six, eight, six. Eight six. Three seven one two. It was Lori's, yes. Thank you, Lori, for submitting. Let's check it out. Alright, and we have a number of builds here to tour. Um, you didn't give me a specific one to focus on, which is totally fine. I can just go ahead and uh pick a few here. Um now I know our client. And I know he is a bit on a budget. So I'm thinking I could pick this one, the Messy Manor, the Total Blank Slate, which looks like it's still under construction. Um, then we could look at a different one. They're all pretty ritzy after that, but maybe there's something, maybe maybe his budget's larger than I think it is. I don't know. Um, but all right. Why don't we why don't we start with Messy Manor? All right, here we are. Okay, this is interesting. We kind of have like a a desert vibe going on. So why don't we go ahead and just begin introducing the house to uh, our new client and you guys can all meet him. All right, everybody is very anxious to meet you because we are now looking at our very first vacation home on today's agenda. There's going to be a lot of vacation homes we're seeing. This is the first one. It is from Lori. And we're going to see a few from Lori. The first one is in the middle of a desert. And everything's really overgrown. There's some trash and cardboard boxes outside. But why don't I just step inside real quick and give you just a, a glance at what you see when you first walk into the front door. 
It's a pretty small dwelling. Uh, when you walk in, you almost trip over a boot that's on the ground, and there's some garbage next to it on the floor. Um, there's just boxes kind of stacked up everywhere. It doesn't seem like uh, the previous occupant has finished moving out yet. Uh, there's some clothes hanging off the sofa. Everything, I got to say, looks kind of cheap. Uh, there's a little kitchenette, but it's like full of old dishes and stuff. There's a rotten turnip, so apparently someone who was hanging out here was trying to play the stock market and, and it failed miserably. I would say the nicest item in this whole place is like a nice big screen TV. So if you decide to buy this vacation home, at least you'll have something to watch. What are your thoughts so far? Okay. I'm excited to introduce you all to our, our newest uh, client. Here we go. Man, you're speaking my language here. Sounds like a groovy vibe, bro. Love the reclaimed desert aesthetic. And old boxes, that's art, man. Unfinished, rough around the edges, just like $2 Dan. So about this big screen TV, though, makes me a bit nervous, you know? Might hike up the price on old Dano here. Ah, uh, hold on a sec. Just drop my $2 bill into Ooh. a pile of wet turnip mush. Gross when that happens, man. Is there any hidden storage places around here? You know, like secret compartments under the floorboards or something? Could use a safe spot for my precious $2. And oh, man, just remembered I blew a stack of cash on fancy avocado toast sprinkled with gold flakes this morning. Oh. If only I'd known I'd come across a place this rad. Life's wild, ain't it, bro? Okay, so he wants to know if there is any, you know, place to, to store his uh, his money. So that's fair. Um, let's just, yeah. I get it, $2, Dan. I totally understand. Uh, there is a few places you could store your $2. There's a paper bag on the floor. You could store it there. There are some boxes, a number of boxes, so you could hide it in one of those. Uh, there's also that trash I mentioned is actually an empty can. So maybe you could, like, you know... Put it in the empty can. No one would suspect a thing. Two dollar Dan is interested in this property. Everybody. Ah, uh, nice thinking, bro. Old paper bag or an empty can. Perfect hidden spots for my most prized possession, my two dollar bill. What a sneaky tactic. Wish the same thoughtfulness was extended towards pricing. Dude, hope this place is within my budget of $2. <laughs> so we done touring this groovy shack or what? All right. Well, yeah, it sounds like he's incredibly interested. So let's let's see. Let's uh we're going to put it on the list, right? We're going to get his rating, see what he thinks, and uh we'll, you know, we'll go from there. We'll check out another one. Yes, $2 Dan, it is time for you to rate this particular property. What do you think? Okay. Let's see what he thinks. Bro, this spot speaks to my soul. Boxes, trash, paper bags. Sounds like a $2 Dan dream come true. Plus, the mess makes it all the more authentic, you know? I would have to give this one a solid five star rating, my wow. man. With my expert haggling skills, I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. Super stoked on it. Now, if only that fancy caffeinated mocha macchiato I bought this morning was just $2, man, that would have been sweet. Instead, I ended keeping just a $2 bill. Sigh, life's a ride, ain't it? All right, hey. Five stars on the very first build. Lori, congrats. All right, we're going to check out another one. Excellent work. Um, I think we tell Wardell we're ready to go to the next one. Five stars from $2 Dan, the very first property. He's very pleased. All right, we're going to show him another one from Lori. Oh, wow. Okay. This is a exclusive little uh, lot here. Okay, $2 Dan, we're on to Lori's next property. And this lot is pretty exclusive. It's fully paved with uh, nice cobblestone. There's a porta potty outside, which is kind of cool. 
And there's a couple of uh, different vehicles here at your disposal. There's a bicycle and a motorized scooter. Uh, but let's step inside real quick. And inside is very interesting. Two Dollar Dan, it looks like this place is still under construction. There is some really big heavy-duty construction equipment. Obviously, hard at work. Uh, I don't know if this is the finished product or if it's going to become something spectacular in here. But uh, I can tell you right now, you have a concrete floor. You have some bags of trash. You have some, uh, you know, stuff like a, a ladder and some scaffolding and things that you can kind of trip over. Um, you could maybe spread out a pile of rubble if you want to sleep. Uh, I'm not really sure, but that's what we're looking at so far. I wonder what he's going to think of this. Does he want to fix her upper? Whoa, bro. Construction vibes? Talk about living on the wild side. I got to say, though, this one's not screaming $2 Dan to me. Mm. Not sure, man, but all that heavy equipment and the motorized scooter, those things seem like big money items. Chances are old Dan will have a tougher time haggling this down to $2. Although, gotta admit, the rubble could be like a cozy bed. And bro, how'd you guess? My $2 bill slipped right out of my pocket into a puddle of wet cement. Oh. Always my dang luck. All right, are we done touring this place, or is there more secret storage solutions to explore? Uh, well, uh, you could, I guess, store your $2 in this pile of tires that I found. But uh, yeah, no, we are, we are done touring this particular property. Why don't you go ahead and give us your rating? More like a starter over. <laughs> mm, right on. The tire stack does sound pretty secure for my $2, but the overall vibe, not quite $2 Dan style, you know? Right. Those high ticket items are making me nervous, man. Had they been designer bean bags or fancy artisan waffle makers, I might have rated it higher. But this. I'd go with one star. Whoa. All those expensive looking construction equipment could be a hard sell for my $2 deal. Certainly makes me wish I hadn't invested all my savings on buying that gold plated bonsai tree last week. What a total blunder on my part, bro. Yikes. <laughs> one star. One star for this lovely property. <laughs> uh, $2 Dan was not impressed. Not in the slightest. Okay. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll check out one more. You got the fart sound. That's a win. <laughs> I don't know why I'm searching custom designs. What's happening? I clicked the wrong menu item. We left so easily last time. So custom design portal. No, uh, I want to leave. Okay, uh, I'm going to show him Mad Scientist Lair. Okay, this could be interesting. Let's check that out. This might be like a good middle ground for him. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. All right, $2 Dan, Lori has one more property to show you today, and this one resembles a mad scientist's lair. The outside, very isolated. You're kind of just in the middle of the ocean on a big rock. Um, outside the house is like just a, a big metal tank. Who knows what's in there? Let's go inside. The laboratory itself, very small. I'm seeing a uh, rotting corpse in the corner. So maybe there was an experiment done here at some point that didn't go super well. Um, there are some some pieces of lab equipment and you have some like test tubes and Bunsen burners and all those sciencey things here too. It's very dark. Um, I'm not sure if the 
they can afford a lot of light in here. There's one big light over the exam table. Um, the exam table has straps on it, so if you get tired but you're worried about rolling off your bed, you could strap yourself in. Um, yeah, overall, you know, just imagine a dingy laboratory, and and you kind of have uh, a good visual of of what we're looking at here. He did. He jumped right up there. <laughs> He's like, "Look, you can lay right here." All right, let's see what he says. Whoa, a mad scientist's lair, huh? That's got an eerie kind of cool to it, you know? I'm digging the isolation, the tank-like house. It's got a real post-apocalyptic vibe. Feels very $2 Dan. The exam table with straps seems like a sweet spot for my afternoon naps, <laughs> especially after munching on overpriced truffle pizza. Yeah, those make me fairly sleepy and penniless, although, man... All those lab gadgets and the corpse. Maybe they'll shoot up the price. Could be a tricky haggling situation for me and my valuable $2 bill. Speaking of which, it just nosedived into a beaker of some strange bubbling concoction. Just my luck, huh? So, are we done with this eccentric scientist pad, bro? He's afraid the corpse is going to drive up the price. Um... <laughs> You know what, Dan? Yes, we are we are done. Go ahead and give us your rating for for this particular property. Well, right. bro, I'm digging the mad scientist vibe. It's got its own unique charm, you know. But with all that fancy lab equipment and rotting corpse, surprisingly I'm not creeped out. I'd probably have a harder time haggling it down to my usual two dollars. So gotta keep it real, man. I'd rate this one two stars. Oh. I just wish I hadn't spent a ridiculous lump of cash on that custom-painted surfboard last month. Could have saved more for such cool digs. Life's wild, ain't it? I, <laughs> that's becoming his catchphrase. Um, <laughs> okay, two stars. <laughs> that's, not, that's not great, Lori. Uh, it's not great. Uh, two Dollar Dan is very interested in the first property, though. So... Uh, there is that. Uh, let's go ahead and end the tour, and we'll go to another showcase. Started strong, yes. I I think your first property is in the lead for sure. All right, we're gonna we're gonna type a new address now. So we're gonna pick a random number. Seven of you have submitted so far. I just picked Lori's because it was the first one. Um, now we're gonna see if Two Dollar Dan wants to pick the next one. Okay, $2, Dan. There are a whole bunch of designers who want to show you their vacation home properties. Right now, seven different designers are waiting in line. We've seen the first designer. Now, you need to choose between numbers two and seven which one you want to check out next. Mm, tough choice, bro. But lucky number four has always had a soft spot in my heart. Okay. So, let's see what the fourth designers got for two dollar Dan. Drum roll, please. I don't have a drum roll. Uh, there we go. All right, we have it here. Five zero eight four six six four five one three zero six. Shane, thank you for sending in your uh, your builds. It was Styria. Appreciate it. Uh, okay, so we have a whole bunch of uh, builds here. I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. So let's see. Anyone in particular? You said dealer's choice. <laughs> uh, <coughs> and they were roommates. Um, Fleet Street Shop. A Bountiful Bear Bungalow, Fantasy Theme Park, Cafe Nan, a Home Bathed in Elegance, Cradle, The Cradle of Civilization. Hmm. I almost want him to pick, but it would take a while to read all these out. I think we'll start with Pretty Fruity. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, this is nice. All right, $2 Dan, we're on to the next batch of homes. Uh, the person who sent us the next three we're going to look at is Wisteria. And uh, that's with a W, Wisteria. Uh, we are going to be seeing what looks to be a, a home that's inspired by fruit. Uh, we're in an apple orchard outside, and I'm going to walk in now. And it's a pretty solid place. So this vacation home is actually built for two. So if you have someone you're going to be rooming with on your vacation, uh, there are two bedrooms. And then there's a central area where there is like a, an apple chair and a, and a grapefruit table. So like a fruit themed furniture. The kitchen is small. It's kind of it's kind of cool. Like it, it's got like just a little place to wash your um, fruit and, and cut it up. And there's a fridge and a little stove top. But it's very modest. Um, and then... You know, you have, like, a music player over here, uh, and then you have, like, some... Oh, th this this room has its own Apple TV, and not the Apple the company, but, like, Apple the fruit. It's it's shaped like an actual apple. Uh, and then, like, there's some bookshelves, plain to read and stuff like that. So, uh, I don't know. It seems pretty nice. What do you think? This is awesome. This is a really great job. Fruity, huh? Sounds mm -hmm. pretty fresh, dude. The Apple TV, not the corporation, but the fruit, gotcha, bro. Has got me concerned, though. Sounding like a high-ticket item, but two bedrooms? That's an opportunity for a roommate, bro. Help split the costs. Yeah. If I hadn't blown all my cash on scented candle subscriptions or designer sodas, maybe I'd have more than $2, right? Speaking of which, just drop my prized $2 bill into a jam juice mixer. Oh. All the fruity pulp, man, always ends up this way. So we finished with the Grand Fruit theme tour? He's always so eager to move on. Um, okay. I'm going to... Here's what I'm going to tell him. Yes, we are finished touring this one. Going forward, since we're looking at three different properties from each designer, I'm actually going to ask you to save your ratings until we've seen all three houses. So I need you to remember which ones we're looking at and what they're like. And then I'm going to ask you to rate each one out of five stars once we finish touring all three. Does that make sense? I think that'll be easier if, if he understands. I think it'll be easier than just asking him every single time to rate the next one, and we'll go on to the next one. Yeah, man, gotcha. A trippy marathon of house tours before the star ratings. Makes sense, bro. Let's chill out and explore the next fruit-inspired crib. Remember, I only have $2, so hoping you're showing me places that won't break my bank. So what's next on the juicy agenda? Okay, he was pretty into the fruit, I'm, I gotta say. Uh, a lot of these are, like, food-themed. Let's show him the fantasy theme park. I want to just see what he's going to do with this. Okay. <laughs> this is wild. Um, all right, right on, $2 Dan. Check it out. We're in a fantasy theme park. Yes. Uh, I've just walked through the big gate and outside, we haven't even gone inside yet, there is a merry-go-round, and there's a Ferris wheel, and there's teacup rides, and there's a lot of lighting and a nice stone path leading you indoors. And once inside, you have a lot of souvenirs, it seems. There's balloons, there's ice cream, there's cotton candy, there's changing rooms because there's a lot of different clothing for the theme park. You know, you can get yourself a, a, a souvenir shirt or something and try it on the changing room. It is mostly a store in here, I think. Um, but there is an upstairs. Before I go there, tell me what you think so far. This is cool. I like this. Whoa, a theme park vibe? That's pretty gnarly, dude. Having my own Ferris wheel would be rad. But man, that's got me sweating. Sounds like those things cost a chunk of change, you know? <laughs> Not looking promising for my humble two dollars. 
plus all these souvenirs. They'd be a nightmare for a dude like me with impulse shopping issues. <laughs> Last week, I ended up buying a gold-plated luchador mask from a flea market. Who needs that? Apparently, $2 Dan. <laughs> Jeez, man. Oh, and just my darn luck, drop my $2 bill in a tub of half-eaten cotton candy. Gross when that happens, man. All righty. Ready for the grand tour upstairs? All right, he wants to see the upstairs. Oh, wow. This is cool. Awesome. Well, it looks like upstairs is where you'll be staying because this is where the bed is. It's very nice and comfy. Uh, they have a very old TV, very retro TV up here. Two shelves full of stuffed animals, all the stuffed animals you could ever want. Surely you won't be impulse buying any stuffed animals anytime soon if you move in here. And, uh, you know, there's just some nice, some nice chill music playing in the background. It's pretty cool up here. Patrick furniture is awesome. I wish they had made more. Ah, the plushy zone. Man, stuffed animals everywhere sounds comforting. Great for cuddles. And the old TV has got me relieved. Sounds more $2 Dan style than a high-tech one. But again, bro, this whole theme park vibe and the souvenir shop downstairs are giving me the jitters, like trying to cut on expensive kale smoothies. But hey, let's finish the round of house touring before my final verdict, right? Got more of Wisteria's homes to check? Wow, he got the name right. I thought for sure the thing that picks up my voice wouldn't have done a very good job. <laughs> okay, we didn't need to go outside for that. I can just hit the button. All right, we're going to check out one more. And then we're going to see what he rates all of them. I, I'm thinking he's probably not going to like a home bathed in elegance as much as I want to see that. Um, Fleet Street Shop. Oh, no. Not low battery. That's okay. I got cords everywhere. We already know that if it's like impulse or if it's a place where he feels like he's going to do a lot of impulse shopping, he's probably not going to like it. So we probably won't go there. Okay. Um, I want to see... And they were roommates. Okay. Oh, this is cool. I like this. All right, we are at Wisteria's last vacation home, and this one is currently being occupied by CJ and Flick, who are living here as roommates, but it looks like it's on the market, so we're checking it out. Outside is uh, a place where you can sit down and do some fishing. Uh, you could hang up your clothes on the clothesline after washing them to, to you know dry them. There's there's some hammocks and stuff. It, it's, it's very chill out here. There's some piles of leaves to play in, and let's go inside now. This house is pretty big. We're going to have to go check out the upstairs separately, but I'm going to tell you about the downstairs. Uh, there is a living room with a fireplace and a big screen TV on top. Uh, there's a coat rack to, you know, after you come in from a long day of fishing, hang up all of your gear. You know, you got your tackle box and, and cooler nearby, too. Uh, there's there's a big bookshelf full of encyclopedias you can read if you want to brush up on whatever's in, in encyclopedias. Uh, there's a little kitchen, not too big. Uh, you got like a microwave and a stove and a fridge and a little rice cooker, you know, uh, all, all that fun stuff. So that is what we're looking at. I still got to go upstairs, but what do you think so far? Look how much they're enjoying their company, each other's company. Dude, a fishing spot and encyclopedia galore? Man, this is like a Fisher Intellectuals paradise. The fireplace has got a cozy vibe going on. And man, the old hammock outside? Perfection for lounging with a good book. The big screen TV's got me worried though, bro. Sounds a bit too fancy. I'd have more funding if I hadn't splurged on a rare diamond-encrusted peacock feather pen set. Yeah, man, I know. 
weird investment. Anyway, just slipped my $2 bill into a crevice in the coat rack. Such an annoying routine. Ready for the grand upstairs tour, dude? Okay, I don't know why he's... I guess he's testing to see if he can hide the $2 bill somewhere. Oh, wow. Okay. What is up here? Oh, my gosh. All right, here we go. So, upstairs, the first thing you see, it looks like you're going to get two complete gaming setups. Each one has a supercomputer and four monitors. That's a total of two computers and eight monitors for the price of one vacation home. You also have two gaming chairs, and then there's a bedroom, a nice big bed with, like, you know, ants and, and, and stuff. When I say ants, I mean there's a little, like, thing. You know, you know the things ants live in that you can keep in your house? It's one of those. Uh, and then... You know, there's a place, there's like a little workshop area, basically. Right now it's being used to examine bugs and stuff. And then there's a bathroom. Pretty nice bathroom. Uh, there's a tub and a toilet and, and a nice sink. But uh, yeah, the upstairs is fully decked out. Sea monkey. That was, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't remember. Oh, man, that gaming setup sounds way too intense for a humble $2 Dan. I mean, I love a good game, bro, but that's got to drive the price sky high. Not to mention the antennae-filled ant farm and the fancy bathroom. Man, I'm getting a sinking feeling about this. And as per routine, my $2 bill fluttered out right into the gaming computer's fan vent. What? How does this keep happening, man? This place might be a skater jump too high for my budget, bro. Alrighty then, let's wrap up the house tours. Been quite the ride so far. Okay, uh, he seems a little discouraged by the upstairs. He was digging it first, though. He was, he was pretty chill. Totally radical, dude. <laughs> you might need a few roommates. All right. Okay, $2 Dan, you've now seen every build that Wisteria has to offer. Give us your rating of each one. Okay. Is in the bathroom where the diaper changing place. <laughs> Sugar wife, thank you for the uh, super chat. Appreciate it. Here we go. Alrighty, bro. Let me jog my memory here. First off, the fruit themed house. It was modest, but that Apple TV's got old Dan here feeling anxious. A neat little place, but might just break my $2 limit. So I'd rate it three stars. Mm -hmm. Then came the theme park home with the souvenir shop and massive stuffed animal collection. A bit extravagant, man. Might be hard to bag for just $2. So it gets a 1.5 star rating from $2 <laughs> Dan, bro. Last, we took a tour of the gaming heaven with nerdy ant farms. That one was way too decked out. More than what $2 Dan could possibly afford. No way I could haggle that one down to $2. So I give it a one-star rating. Ah, oh, man. Just remembering how I spent a fortune on those platinum chopsticks last month could have saved up for better digs. Such is life, bro. All right. Well, um, that was it. I don't know. Is this a celebration? You got one of them three stars. So not all hope is lost there, but he absolutely obliterated the other two builds. All right. We'll have to pick another one. All right, $2 Dan, thank you for your ratings. It is now time to check out some designs from our next designer. There are currently nine designers now who have submitted for you to check out. Uh, so far, you've seen number one and number four, so you just need to pick a number between one and nine that isn't one or four. I'm not going to tell him which one he's picked every single time. I'm just trying to keep him. Ah, uh, decision show. time again. All right, let's see what number seven has got in store for $2 Dan, hoping for some cozy, budget-friendly vacation homes, bro. Ready to roll. All right. He picked number seven. 
I like having them pick. I used to use a random number picker, and I hated that. So I, I enjoy having them pick out the uh, build. Or the, the number. Lily, Thank you for submitting. Uh, so, Lily has us checking out Doc, Grizzly, and Digby. So those were the three. So which one's that? So that, is that Doc? I don't remember all, so that's definitely Digby. A safety first bunker. That's That must be Grizzly. So Doc, Grizzly, and Digby. Process of elimination tells me that this is Doc, this is Grizzly. So that, that, and I know that's Digby. Okay. All right. Wow. I don't even, how do I describe this? Okay. Okay, $2 Dan, we're on to our next set of builds. The first build, we're seeing, well, we're seeing three. They're all from Lily Crossing. And the first one we're seeing definitely has some kid core vibes going on. Uh, there's all these tiny libraries. They sit outside and you can like borrow books from them, right? Uh, there's a little playground, just a little one, a little plastic slide and a little toy horse you could ride around on and a thing you can climb in a sandbox, all that fun stuff. But let's go inside. Inside, it's pretty massive in here. I don't think I've seen, you know, either has seen a larger vacation home yet. And it's all designed like a playroom. There's different corners with different activities. Uh, one corner has like a bunch of toys and stuff, like uh, little building blocks and a pop-up book and toy crate. Uh, there's another area for reading and writing. Uh, you have a little library, lots of really big bookshelves and places to read. And uh, then just like a cozy story time area. Like there's little pillows on the ground you could sit on and you could actually hire someone if you want to come and read you a bedtime story. Uh, that's just the downstairs. We still got to go upstairs. But what do you think so far? Yeah, I've never seen a kid core build quite like this. This looks amazing. Kid core, bro. Interesting. Love the cozy local library vibe and the fun slide outside. Sounds like a pretty chill place to be. But dude, you said this place is massive. That's totally stressing me out. Bigger <laughs> the house, bigger the price. You know, had I not spent half my earnings on buying Francis, the albino tiger, a stuffed toy, I might have had more than $2. Apart from that, a tiny mishap accidentally dropped my $2 bill into the toy crate. Always my luck, ain't it? All right, upstairs tour. Here we come. Here we. Okay. <laughs> it said here we come again, but I don't know. It was weird. It said here we a second time. Uh, all right. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, upstairs is also pretty big. Uh, it is a full-fledged library, but this one looks like it's more for adults. Okay. Because uh, there's a lot more boring books up here. And there's, like, some tables, and someone was drinking coffee, and there's paper scattered around. Like, there are people in here that do, like, actual work, you know, like, just, like, real adult stuff. And uh, so there's even some computers. There's, like, four of them, so you can, like, rent out a computer for the day, I guess. Um, and, and there's even, like, a back area for some more quiet reading. Tons of books and bookshelves everywhere. Uh, but, yeah, it has real public library vibes. The books are not boring. More boring than the ones downstairs. These are like law books. Oh, man. A full-fledged library upstairs might be a bit too scholarly for $2 Dan, you know? <laughs> Plus, all those adult books and computers sound pretty pricey. Doubt I could haggle this place down to $2 without them laughing in my face. You know, had I not bought that crystal-encrusted frisbee last week, maybe I would have had more to spare. Sigh. On top of that, my $2 bill slid right into one of the old, musty library books. Clumsy Dan strikes again, huh? All right, bro. Let's finish the house tours before I rate this one. On to the next. 
<laughs> I love how well he's remembering that I told him we're going to look at three and then we're going to rate them. <laughs> I was worried that wouldn't work. Usually that's the kind of thing I would write into the AI before the stream starts. Okay, again, I did not have to go outside. All right, Grizzly and Digby. Thanks for being here, everybody, by the way. Appreciate you. Okay, what do we got here? Wow. All right, well, the second vacation home from Lili is going to be uh, out in the woods. It's a big log cabin that's way out in the woods, and it looks like... Uh, quite the place. I would say it kind of has summer camp vibes, you know? I see a car parked in the background. Maybe, you know, maybe that comes with the place. I'm not sure. Uh, there's some candy that was left on the ground, and it's covered in ants, which is kind of gross. Let's go inside. Inside this log cabin, you've never seen anything like it. You have some really nice stuff in here. Everything is sparkling, okay? When I tell you it's sparkling, I mean it. Like, it would hurt your eyes to look at some of this stuff. You have a, a gold urn, sparkling. You have a case with gold bars inside, sparkling. There's a pile of cash on the table. Uh, not sparkling. Cash doesn't typically sparkle. There's some gold dishware. There's a briefcase full of perhaps money or gold bars, also sparkling. And there's other gold trinkets in the windows and, and just around. Uh, the, the lighting is immaculate. Everything in here is just completely gorgeous. And this is just the downstairs. We haven't even gone upstairs yet. Also, for some reason, there's some toilet paper here. Um, but sometimes you're looking for, you know, storage for your $2 bill. There's a golden safe. So I want you to keep that in mind. Dazzle risk. <laughs> Whoa, dude, sounds like a gold mine. Literally. All that sparkly stuff is making my head spin. I mean, a humble log cabin suddenly turned into a glitzy exhibit. Kind of bizarre, you know? And all those gold bars and cash piles, man, they're bound to rack up the price more than my $2 limit. Heck, had I not squandered a fat chunk of my savings on that bedazzled zombie gnome, don't ask, I'd have more cash in hand. <laughs> And now my misfortune continues. My $2 bill slipped right into the sparkly urn. Just the usual, eh? All right, let's pump the brakes on the gold rush and head upstairs. Oh, what's the deal there, bro? Okay. He actually seems impressed. I thought, I thought he'd be a little more freaked out. What is up here? What is going on? Okay, well, upstairs, it seems like there are a couple of different rooms, like bedrooms. Uh, it kind of has outdoor vibes up here, which is very interesting. Uh, you know, when I said it has, like, summer camp kind of vibes, I think this is where people would actually stay. So it's like cabins in the woods, but you're also upstairs inside the house. I can't imagine what, what engineering it must have taken to make it feel like the outdoors was inside. Uh, there's some porter potties and stuff, and if you uh, go into one of the bedrooms... Uh, you know, there's there's multiple beds and there's a place to change your clothing and stuff and and you know just just some some you know naturey things. There's a little thing with a bug inside and there's like a a lantern and and there's a photo that someone brought from home and and all that stuff. Both rooms pretty similar up here. Uh, yeah, upstairs pretty amazing. How does the floor sparkle? That's this particular flooring. I forget what it's called. I think it's the glowing moss floor. This is cool. Nature-inspired bedrooms, huh? That's a chill vibe. Although, must have been a pretty penny to get that indoor-outdoor feel in a log cabin. Not sounding like a fair deal for me and my lonely $2 bill. Dude, if I hadn't bought a whole haunted doll collection on a whim, I'd have a lot more cash to play with. And of course, just dropped my $2 bill into one of those porta potties Can't catch a break, can Why? I? Why? <sighs> All right, let's wrap this up and move on to the next property. 
I'm all glitzed out here, man. Why did he go into there? Why did he do that? That's disgusting. <laughs> Two dollar Dan is so me. <laughs> Once again, I've walked out of the home to end the tour. I don't need to do this. I don't know why I do this every single time. Well, at least $2 Dan seems aware of his spending habits, Mitsuri. I, I, there is always that, you know. It, he He seems to understand that his spending has gotten him into a bit of a bind. And he's supposed to buy a vacation home. And he's not left with much to, to work with. Okay, this is interesting. Um, so this is Digby's place. Okay, $2 Dan. We're at our next build here. And this one is uh, is all about safety. Okay, so when you get here, there's like a big gate with a warning sign on it. And it looks like if you wanted to, you could probably turn it on and, and have it electrocute any intruders. You know what I mean? Like an electric gate. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm assuming. I don't know if it'll electrocute people or not, but uh, let's just pretend it does for a minute. I'm going to go inside now. And it's very dark in here, but uh, very interesting at the same time. The walls and the fixtures, it's all concrete. Heavy-duty concrete. Uh, it feels like we are inside a survival bunker. Um, there is... No TV. There's like a living room, but instead of a television, it's like board games and stuff. I see a camera on the wall watching everything in this living area. Uh, there's also a kitchen, but the kitchen is uh, pretty modest. Little kitchenette, fridge, microwave. I see an espresso machine. There's some pet food bowls, which is also pretty interesting. Um, I also see some rooms in the back that, uh, you know, one, one looks like it's full of survival gear. Like, you know, hard hats and gas masks and, and things like that. And uh, there's another room that's just a bathroom. Um, but it looks like it accommodates multiple residents. There's, like, stalls and stuff. So I think you could, if you get into a situation, right, where where the world is, is kind of becoming scary, you could probably bring a friend here and hunker down for a while. But uh, that was the downstairs. I'm just going to go upstairs and tell you about it right now. It looks like if you need medical care, the first thing you see is a big medicine cabinet full of who knows what. But probably probably some good stuff in there to uh, take care of you. There's a room full of bunk beds. Uh, all these bunk beds are, you know, for, for all of the friends you potentially bring in here to, to save during whatever awful event could be going on. There's a little TV in here to keep everybody entertained, but not much else. Some lighting and a television. And then there's another room that's closed off, but it's it's full of food. Canned goods, crates of food, 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 tons of food, food everywhere. There's also, hanging on the walls, different raincoats and things. You know, just, just more survival supplies. So that is what we're seeing. So, is this inspired by the... Um, Inspection day challenge? Because <laughs> it's really, really cool. It's very creative. Man, a survival bunker, huh? Feels like I've plunged into a movie plot. That electric gate and the camera are kind of cool, but seems high-tech, likely to be expensive. Mm. On a positive note, the board games and bunk beds give it a chill vibe. Kind of $2 dance scene. Man, those bunk beds. Scary how good they seem for my $2. Now, this may seem random, bro, but just remembered I splurged big on a matchstick mini mansion last week. Crazy, I know. Pretty sure somewhere in this survival bunker, there's a spot for my $2 bill. Dang it, man. I slipped it into the canned good piles. Makes for a wild treasure hunt. Right on, let's wrap up with Lily's bunker and move on, bro. Or am I missing something here? Uh, no. You're not missing anything. All right. Sounds like we're going to move on. We've we've seen all three. Lily, thank you so much for submitting. It was inspired by that. That's awesome. Yeah, you did a fantastic job. I love it. I love it. Um, it's like you fit all of the rules into one happy home build. <laughs> yes, well, $2 Dan, you have now seen all three builds from Lily. So it is time to give each one your rating and your thoughts. All right. I, I don't know what he's going to say about these. 
he seemed pretty interested in all of them. Alright. Ah, right on. Now, starting off with the Kid Core Library House, it seemed like a nice, cozy spot, but all those books in that massive space gave me pause, bro. For $2 Dan, I'd say it's a 2.5 star situation. Now, the Golden Log Cabin in the Woods was pretty wild. Felt like I entered a fairy tale, but all that gold and sparkle was too rich for my $2 budget. Sadly, gotta give it a one star rating. Ouch. Last up, we checked out the Survival Bunker. That was an experience, man. Sure, some of the tech stuff could jack up the price, but the overall survival vibe felt attainable for $2, Dan. Okay. Can't help but notice all the storage spaces for my precious $2 bill. I'd rate this rad bunker a solid 3.5 stars. Wow. Man, if only I hadn't bought that life-sized unicorn balloon floaty last summer, I'd have more than $2 now. All right, what's up next, bro? Okay, hey. He said... That this place he sees he sees himself in three point five stars. Awesome work, Lily. Okay. <laughs> Look at Digby's face. <laughs> um. All right. Let's go to the next one. Okay. So, oh, we got to have him pick one. $2 Dan. It is now time to pick a new designer. There are 11 submissions now, 11 people waiting in line. Go ahead and pick a number. Let's see what he says. Man, so many talented folks lined up. All right, let's spin the magic wheel and see. Let's go with number two, bro. Hoping for some budget-friendly vacation homes within my $2 limit. Can't wait. All right. Okay, we got it here. One, four, six, five. Five, four, eight, three. Eight, two, eight, four. Lord Marco's Place, a.k.a. Dr. Goop. Thank you for submitting. And Dr. Goop only has three builds right now, so that's perfect. Um, you said that Nighttime Express was your best one. Let's save the best for last, then, and we will uh, we'll start here. Oops. Oh, I hit the B button again. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Oh, wow. This is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, I don't. What is he even gonna say about a place like this? Okay, two dollar Dan. We are now checking out builds from the designer known as Doctor Goop. Doctor Goop has shown us a few different interesting things here. The very first place we're at is a bar. It's like a bar slash cafe. Um, so I hope you're in the mood to be a part-time business owner because. There's a lot of stuff here. Uh, there's tables and chairs with lots of food and stuff. This is a, a full house, so this must be a really good location. Uh, there's some music playing in the background, and in the back, you know, you have like the the place for where your coffee is, the espresso machines. You got cash registers. You got all the all the things. A blender for making smoothies. Everything you would need to, uh, you know, have a, a successful bar. Let's go in the back real quick. In the back, there's a few things going on here. You have the, the main kitchen where it's uh, 
you know, interesting. It almost didn't seem like there was a door to go in there, but there is a door. It's just kind of narrow, and in the back, the chefs are hard at work cooking up all kinds of stuff. You got different bits of cookware. There's a giant thing of soup that's boiling right now, probably about to boil over. And there's also a public restroom, just a, you know, a place where a couple of patrons can use the bathroom. Um, and for some reason, there's a basket of towels on the floor. I'm not sure what that's all about. But that is the first place we're looking at. What do you think? I got to go back to the front. <laughs> it's too narrow. Dr. Goop's got a bar, cafe place for $2 Dan, huh? I got to admit, running my own joint does sound pretty rad, bro. But the way you described it, all those espresso machines, blenders and all, sounds like big bucks. I might find myself overstepping my $2 budget here. Man, if only I hadn't invested in that advanced drone-powered confetti launcher. Such a headache for my savings. Huh. Oh, here we go again. My $2 bill slipped right into that kitchen soup pot. Tough oh, timing. So are we wrapping up this bar cafe tour for the next spot, bro? That was a test. I mentioned the soup because I was like, this is where he's going to lose his $2. And it's sure enough, that is exactly what happened. Josiah, thank you. How's it going? Okay, we'll check out the next one. It's Demon Queen's Lair. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, Dr. Goop's next build for you is called Demon Queen's Lair. And uh, we are indeed here at a big castle. Uh, we must be pretty high up. Uh, it just, just, we, we just, it just has that vibe, you know, like uh, like we're at the top of a castle. There's fires everywhere and stuff, and there's a big gold statue greeting you. Um, let me go through the castle walls here and pop inside and see what it's like. Someone wanted to point out, too, that uh, with all the fire going on, you probably wouldn't have to pay for heating, so just keep that in mind. But we are now in the Demon Queen's lair, and uh, wow, there's a big red carpet walking straight up to a throne. Uh, there's some suits of armor guarding said throne. Uh, it looks like I see a fireplace. There's a, a big model of Godzilla here. Uh, oh, wow, look at that. There's some bars for a prisoner to be in, and it looks like there. it's a... oh. Inside the bars is a guillotine and a bucket. So uh, I'm sure you can kind of piece together what that's for. Uh, pretty medieval build. Uh, there's a big harp in the background in case you want to hire someone who plays a harp while you eat at your big fancy table. Um, so that's the downstairs. Let me head upstairs real quick. Worth pointing out the candlelight in here saves on your lighting bills too. Someone else wanted to point that out. Anyway, as we come upstairs, we see... A room that has some kind of dungeon vibes to it. It looks like a lot of different fields of study are up here. Like, we got, like, a, a thing with some flowers in it. And we have, like, a, a shelf. And on that shelf, jars of some kind of gas. I, I like to think they're jars of farts. I think whoever, you know, currently owns this vacation home is studying different types of farts. Um, and then the bedroom, big glorious bed. Uh, there's also a bathroom with a, a jacuzzi tub and a golden toilet and a gold vase for some reason. Um, so that's that's what we're seeing here. W what do you think of Demon Queen's Lair? When there's walls. It's like so hard to find a good angle. Whoa, dude. A Demon Queen's Lair? Sounds straight out of my favorite graphic novel. The flames and castle setup got a wickedly cool vibe and all. But man, all those suits of armor, the throne, jacuzzi tub, golden toilet, that's blindingly fancy. I mean, how's $2 Dan going to haggle his way into owning this lair? If only I hadn't thrown my cash at that inflatable superhero costume palace. Big oops, oh brother, just dropped my $2 bill into that guillotine bucket. <laughs> the irony. Ready for the next tour, bro? <laughs> Don't go get it. Uh, okay. 
next door. Can't look at Isabel the same now. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what kind of uh, wrongs Isabel had to commit in order to be dubbed a demon queen. All right, Nighttime Express. Okay, this is interesting. I, I'm i not exactly sure, because it's supposed to be a train, right? All right, well, Dr. Goop has one more property for you to see. This one is called the Nighttime Express, and it is indeed nighttime as we're arriving here. There's snow on the ground, and there's some really big stone walls um, and it looks like there is some spots in the back area to kind of sit down and wait. Let's go inside real quick. Ah, yes. And once inside, you realize you've actually just entered a moving train car. Uh, yes, if you always want to be on the move, this is the vacation home for you. Uh, there's some seating. There's a cityscape in the background kind of cruising by as you, you know, as you're here. And this car even has a place to sleep and a bathroom. And there's also free food served on this journey as well. Um, there's doors that go into other train cars. But ultimately, uh, yeah, this house is always on the move. What do you think? course i'm getting like hiccups now as i'm trying to talk to him this is a really awesome i love this wall this is my favorite wall in the whole game a moving train car bro now that's a spice of life imagine always on the move viewing the changing cityscapes sounds pretty neat to two dollar dan the complimentary food's a win man but the whole moving property thing might hike up the price too much for me to cover with my two dollars damn if only I hadn't spent a small treasure on those vintage slices of pizza preserved in resin. What? Yeah, man, odd investment, I know. And there goes my $2 bill slipping underneath one of the train car seats. What an adventure this has been. So, my dude, we done with Dr. Goop's tour? He knows. He knows it's time. Yes, we are done with Dr. Goop's tour. Go ahead. Let's hear your assessment. All right, take a seat. I have the toilet to avoid the feet. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> All right, bro, let's go back to the bar cafe. A business establishment's quite appealing, you know? But all that equipment sounds like a big cha-ching to my $2 budget, so reluctantly, but... Honestly, it's a 2.5 star for me. Demon Oof. Queen's lair was intense, my man. Total graphic novel vibes, and old Dan loved it. But all those fancy bits must add up to a price beyond my reach. I'm tossing it a reluctant one-star rating, bro. Ouch. Nighttime Express, the moving train car, sparked a fire in me. On-the-move lifestyle sounds appealing. But again, the mobility factor and all those amenities might make this train whistle past my $2 station. <laughs> so, I'd rate it 2.5 stars. Okay. Wish I hadn't spent so much on a mascot-sized hamster ball last month, man. Might have had more than just $2 for this house hunt now. All right, what's next on the agenda, bro? All right, well, unfortunately, <laughs> you didn't even crack three stars on these. They're too good. I'm sorry. Like... $2 Dan is afraid he's probably not going to be able to afford these. Uh, not all hope is lost. We're still looking at a lot of builds. Who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what could happen to have him maybe change his mind? Maybe he keeps losing $2. Maybe he stumbles upon a pile of $2 bills at some point. Who knows? Mascot size hamster ball sounds fun. <laughs> that does legitimately sound fun. <laughs> Okay. Let's see how many we have now. Still 11. Okay. 
Next up, $2 Dan, we need to go to another showcase. There are still 11 designers waiting for you to pick one of them, so go ahead. All right, feel like getting lucky with number three today. Okay. Let's see what cool vacation homes this designer has got in line for $2 Dan, bro. I'm all ears and eager eyes here. Let's do this. All right, I have it here. Five, six, nine, four, zero, five, zero, five, seven, four, six, nine. I'm going to say it's Ev Ev Evelina. I hope I'm saying your name right. Check this out. Look at all these. Flowery Bowery. Maple Pines. Garden of Regeneration. A place packed with plants. Let's try that one first. It seems modest. <laughs> okay, that's a good question, Josiah. Let's take a quick detour here and ask that question. All right, $2 Dan, the next builds we are seeing are chosen. But before I tell you who they are, everyone wants to know, why do you only have $2? Let's ask him. Let's just figure it out. Like, he's always making excuses for his spending habits, but maybe there's like a specific reason. Ah, oh, man, there's a tail and a half there. All right, here goes. Starts humming. I woke up one sunny day, saw a cool jetpack on display, couldn't resist, walked right in, handed out almost all my green. It was shiny, full of grace, promised to take me to outer space. Instead, landed me in a muddy moat. All I had left was a single note. With a sigh and a rueful glance, gambled away my last chance. Ended up in a pool hall, played a game, lost it all. Walked out poorer, but a bit wiser. Learning the hard way ain't much nicer. Here I am, $2 Dan, living life the best I can. Oh, yeah, ends humming. <laughs> yeah, long story short, I lost all my stash on an impulse buy, as is my habit, bro. Oh. So now all I have is this sinfully stick $2 bill with me. What's next on our virtual tour? That wasn't humming. <laughs> I don't... Starts humming. That's not how humming works at all. Well, now you know. All right, well... You guys asked. You wanted to know why he was so poor. All right, fair enough, $2 Dan. The next series of builds we're seeing are from Evelina. And uh, we're seeing a really modest looking little house first up it's it's like a little garden house there's just some, you know some flowers uh it looks like there is a shower head of some kind that just consistently waters the flowers but it doesn't have a lot of like water pressure so it's just kind of watering the nearby hedges it's kind of missing the flowers altogether but it's a good effort let's go inside Once inside, uh, you realize that it's it's kind of a couple things going on. Uh, partially, this looks like a store of some kind where you actually can buy flowers. There's all kinds of, of stuff behind what looks to be a, a counter where someone could stand and, and you know be like, hey, welcome to my store and sell you flowers. So I'm going to say that this place kind of sells flowers and different plants. A lot of potted plants around here. Uh, there's this really giant looking plant in the corner. Um there's there's some little baby plants you can buy. There's all kinds of stuff, but there's nothing else really going on in here. I wouldn't say there's a bed or a TV or anything like that. The only source of entertainment could be the television at the top where it has the prices of the different flowers on it. I don't know if it gets any other programming, but you could stare at that for entertainment, I guess. If you like gardening, this is probably the place for you. Okay, well, we'll see what he says.
Ah, a modest garden house, huh? Evelina's got the right vibe here. Love the little flower shop idea. Feels like a hobby turned side gig kind of thing for two dollar Dan. Could even make a few bucks here, man. Yeah. That shower head watering the hedges got me chuckling. You know, I don't have good luck with TV, so a priceless monitor is my kind of entertainment. Plus, minimal stuff might help me keep it within my two dollar limit. Although, I once splurged on a lifetime supply of novelty rubber duckies, so who knows? As per $2 Dan lore, my precious bill landed in one of the flower pots. Classic, eh? All right, let's check out Evelina's next property, bro. Classic $2 Dan. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Always losing his $2 in ridiculous places. All right, uh, I'm going to choose the stylish but functional spot. Okay. Oh, uh, I'm going to describe the outside to him. Wow. Okay, well, we're at our second vacation home on the list now, and this one's pretty interesting. It was listed as a stylish but functional spot, and uh, what's pretty cool about it is that it is isolated from everything. It's out here in the middle of a giant lake. You just have this little island all to yourself. Let's go inside. Once inside, uh, you kind of have like a, a one-bedroom apartment going on here, minus the bathroom. But there is a kitchen. There is a place to eat your meals. There is a little area to sleep, like just a, just a nice, simple-looking bed, um, you know, and, and clothing on clothing racks and stuff. There's a living room, but there is no TV. However, for entertainment, you have a clock and some cacti to st stare at. And uh, it looks like they visited that flower shop recently because there are some, uh, you know, potted plants in here as well. Okay. Yeah, this is nice. I like this. That's the best I could describe it, too. I have a feeling $2 Dan's going to be pretty pleased. Hey, bro. A private island spot. That's pretty sweet. Love the isolated vibe for a vacation home. Sounds like a humble little setup. Mm. I got to say, no TV suits $2 Dan just fine. No big spendings and no pesky distractions. Plus, keeping time and staring at cacti sounds appealing in a weird, nice way. The flower shop visit must have added a homely touch, too. But again, a lakeside island property might be a bit too steep for my $2 bargain. Darn it. If only I hadn't bought that thousand-piece glittery penguin puzzle set last month. Oh, clumsy me. Drop my $2 bill into the kitchen sink. So, what's Evelina's next surprise for us, my man? There is no kitchen sink. All right. He wants to see the next one. Did you draw him yourself? Cato drew him. Cato drew $2 Dan. I did the voice, though, after some uh, manipulation with, with uh, some software. It came out like that. I And I did a way different voice. I tried to make it, like, raspy, like, surfer. Hey, man! Like... I, that's not even how it sounded, but I tried to give it that surfer bro rasp. It didn't really work at all. I don't know which one I picked. I just picked a random one. Okay. Oh, this is kind of cool. All right. Well, that previous vacation home was kind of like on an island in the middle of a private lake. This seems to be like your own private beach now, and you're, you're, you have the ocean surrounding you. this vacation home. Uh, it looks like someone recently dropped off an Amazon Prime package sitting at the front door. Uh, there is a place to play beach volleyball, but pretty much one player beach volleyball. Uh, the other side of the net basically goes straight into the ocean, so you could serve the ball into the ocean if you want, and maybe the water will eventually carry it back towards you. Probably not very fun. There's a surfboard. There's like a, a seashell table and stuff. There's some beach blankets so you can sit on, in the sun if that's something you want to do for some reason. Uh, let's go inside.
And once inside, it almost seems like you're underwater. It's a pretty cool vibe in here. Uh, another beach volleyball net. This time a little bit more room to play beach volleyball. Uh, a little bit, you know. The, the ball won't be floating off into the ocean because we are indoors. There's a, a yacht down here, but don't be scared by the word yacht. It's just called that. It actually is just a little sailboat. It's very small and modest. Uh, for some reason, they just list it as a yacht. Uh, there's another surfboard. There's a, a bed shaped like a seashell. And there's a... Oh, there's some pearls just on the ground. Like... Really shiny pearls. So, yeah, seems like a pretty unique vacation home. Yeah, it is 11 laps. And uh, how did I manage to sound exactly like Pat? I didn't, that wasn't on purpose. I, it sounded it's nothing like the voice I did in the end. The software just does what it wants. A private beach now, bro. Evelina's really turning up the style here. Private beach volleyball sounds lonely, though, man. <laughs> the indoor underwater theme's pretty rad. Gives off those cool, calm vibes, you know. As for the yacht, I'm hoping it doesn't skyrocket the price out of my $2 range. You'll be fine. Man, the shiny pearls on the ground sound intriguing. If only I hadn't thrown a chunk of my savings on a ticket to a snail racing championship last year. Oh, and as usual, my $2 bill dropped right into the beach volleyball net. Ugh. <sighs> I must say, Evelina knows how to create interesting spaces for $2, Dan. What's next in the tour, bro? How did he drop it into a net? A beach volleyball net of all things, too. All right. That was three builds, right? I think that was three. Okay. Well, we'll tell him. Yes, well, $2 Dan, it's time for you to actually rate the three places we just saw from Evelina. So go ahead. I didn't know what else to say. Okay. What is he going to say? These were very unique. I don't know what his ratings are going to be. All righty, bro. So, starting with the flower shop house. It had a cozy, humble vibe that $2 Dan digs. Loved the ambiance, but it might be a stretch for my budget. Okay. So let's give it a solid three-star rating. Now, the private island setup. It sounded simple and peaceful, which I kind of like. But again, it feels a teeny bit out of my $2 reach. So, another comfortable three stars for me. Lastly, the private beach house with an indoor sea vibe. Now that was a thrilling twist, wasn't it? But being a coastal property and all, it might be enough to empty $2 Dan's pockets. <laughs> so I'll land on a 2.5 star rating. Okay. If only I hadn't spent a fortune on that collection of authentic movie posters, man. All right then, let's pick another designer with their unique vacation homes, bro. All right, hey, that's awesome. You got a three star in there. I'd say three stars is, other than the first one, well, you haven't been able to do much better than three stars. So you should celebrate that. Congratulations. You've impressed $2 Dan. Okay. We got to let him know. There are now 12 designers in total who would like you to see their places. Let's go ahead and pick one. Decisions, decisions. All right, bro, let's roll with number six. Eager to see what vacation homes they've got for $2, Dan. My $2 bill is ready for this. Bring it on. All right. Oh, why'd you type the number like this? Okay, this is really hard to read. There's no hyphens. Why'd you do this to me? Uh, okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Three and a half star earlier we did. Mini Laura's Place, uh, a.k.a. Totally Descendants. Thank you for sending in your builds. Um, which one do you say? You didn't have a favorite I should focus on? That's all right. Um, okay, let's... <laughs> Stylish Streamer Estate. Well, I got to pick this one.
Okay. The next series of builds we're looking at, two dollar Dan, are, is from somebody named Totally Descendants. Now, this first house, it is pink, it is large, it's just fenced in, but there's nothing else out here. Let's go inside. So, imagine a massive room that's not got a lot of things inside of it. Uh, separating this these spaces is like a, a, a partition, you know, you can see right over it. Uh, on one side is a bed and a cabinet for like clothing and stuff and a bookshelf on the other side uh, a kitchenette with a fridge and there's a table that seats you know some people and and that's about it that's all that's downstairs let's go upstairs Upstairs is another massive room and now it makes a little more sense as to why there's not a whole lot going on downstairs because up here this is a live streamer's paradise up here. There is two different gaming computers, uh, and there's like a, a camera and stuff for capturing, you know, the, the streamer's reactions to things. And, you know, there's a big, big gaming setup, and there's a smaller gaming setup, and there's even different bits of lighting and stuff up here. Uh, there's a background that has some cool, like, you know, an on air sign and some and some plushies. And then over on the right is a bathroom. Again, just just little partitions closing this off. So if there were two people streaming and one person had to use the bathroom, the other person could just kind of turn over their shoulder and, and watch them, you know, use the bathroom, make sure they're doing okay. Um, but but that's what we're looking at here, you know. Uh, so a, a large house with a, a lot of room to walk around. And, uh, you know, if you if you have a career ahead of you as a live streamer, you know, what do you think? I, you know what? This is kind of, this could go either way. <laughs> Man, a live streamer's paradise, huh? Totally Descendants sure knows how to make a splash. Pink exterior gives it a spunky edge, bro. Inside, bare but massive. Bit intimidating for $2 Dan. And upstairs, whoa, a full-fledged streaming setup. Sounds like a dream, but mate... All that tech could cost more than this bloke with his two dollars can handle. If only I hadn't shelled out for a hundred pack of glow-in-the-dark socks. Just my luck. Drop my two dollar bill right under one of those gaming chairs. How about the next property on the list, bro? <laughs> he thinks they're gaming chairs. I feel like before we go to the next build, it's worth pointing out these are not gaming chairs. These are like kitchen chairs. So they'd spent all their money on like the gaming rigs. But they're, they're not using any fancy chairs or anything like that. I just want to be clear. Ah, gotcha, bro. They're economizing on the chairs, huh? Interesting. Adds to the charm in a weird way. Maybe there's a bit of $2 Dan spirit in there after all. Might improve my <laughs> haggling odds. All right. Let's see what the next property holds for us. I knew he'd like that. Okay. Uh, we're going to go to... I like the sound of an all-night karaoke club. Make sure you only stream one hour at a time. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. The next vacation home is labeled as an all-night karaoke club. Kind of interesting. Outside, you know, you got your house in the middle. You got a fence around it. Uh, there's a big neon wear open sign sitting out here. And then someone left some maracas sitting outside. Anyway, let's go inside. Once inside, uh, it's pretty interesting, right? Okay. So you have uh, a big, like, dance floor. You have a karaoke stage in the corner. You also have some, uh, you know, other other bits and bobs like a guitar and, uh, you know, a, a couple music playing devices and a telephone. But uh, the telephone is like so high up, it's almost impossible to reach it. Uh, I kind of have to jump to, to even press one of the buttons on the bottom of the phone. 
Uh, there's also some places to sit down and eat, like some dining benches and stuff. Like, um, you know, they're serving up pizza and french fries down here. Let's go upstairs. Maybe there's a kitchen. Ah, okay, there is no kitchen, so it's one of two things. Either the food is prepared in one of these bathroom stalls, or they're, you know, ordering from, like, Uber Eats or something. Uh, upstairs, though, there's a, the bed and a dresser and some stuffed animals to keep you company. And, uh, like I mentioned, there is a bathroom. All right, let's see what he thinks. Whoa, an all-night karaoke club. Sounds like a one-man party for $2 Dan. Love the dance floor and the stage corner, and pizza and fries sound like my kind of feast, man. But a karaoke club does seem like it could run a bit high for my $2 budget. Dude, had I not invested all my savings in that planetarium-based old record shop, I'd be set. What? And just as it always happens, my $2 bill just slipped out and landed on the karaoke stage. Any more properties to check out from Totally Descendants, bro? <laughs> okay. He, you know what? He seems intrigued by this build. He rightfully pointed out that buying a karaoke club might be a bit expensive. Didn't seem to care if the food was prepared in bathroom stalls. So, you know, he's pretty laid back. Digby would never. All right, one more. Let's check out Island Power Spot. Um... I want to do this one. This is like the big featured build. Okay. The last vacation home from Totally Descendants is in its own little private canyon. There's waterfalls and a moat around it. And uh, it's a pretty big house. The door has gold trim on it. I'm going to go inside. Upon stepping inside, we are greeted by what looks to be maybe a restaurant. There's tables and chairs all over the place, and it would appear that there's food laid out. There's either an event being hosted here right now, or this is just a restaurant where a whole bunch of people have pre-ordered food. The chefs have put it out, and then nobody showed up. I'm not sure where everybody is. Anyway, there's also a little uh, batch of tables in the back where you can like prepare your own coffee and tea and, and treats. Let's go upstairs and see what's going on. And once upstairs, uh, it looks like we are in a pretty large bedroom. You have a sofa in the middle of the room, and it's facing a very large projection screen. So you can have your own home movies in here. The floor is made of marble. The walls are really elegant. They're with nice big windows in them. Uh, there's a fridge in the corner in case you get a bit hungry. There is a bed, of course. There's a little, little bit of flowers in here. You can water those for fun. And there's some fancy music playing. So, pretty cool. Okay. It is classy. It is very classy. Dude, a private canyon house. Now that's extravagant. Sounds remote and cozy, but the gold trim door is a tad concerning for my $2 saving. The inside restaurant vibe seems nice, man, but totally out of my $2 league. Upstairs, the marble floor and home theater setup just scream luxury. If only I hadn't bought three dozen glow-in-the-dark hula hoops. My $2 bill just took a nosedive and landed near those indoor flowers. So, what's the verdict, bro? We done here with Totally Descendants Tour? Okay. He's ready to give his thoughts. Can we make a profit in the dining room? He could. I don't know if he's that business-minded. Yes, $2 Dan. We are now done with Totally Descendants Builds, and it's time for you to give each one a rating. Rating. 
I don't know how he feels. What's the verdict, bro? Yes, let's find out. All right, let's get it started, bro. The pink live streamer's paradise had a unique vibe. Interesting, kind of suited to $2 Dan. But all that streaming tech seems pretty hefty for my budget. So it's going to get a 2.5 star rating from me. Ouch. The private all night karaoke club. Man, that was a trip. Totally my vibe. But running a club seems like it's going to cost more than $2. So another 2.5 stars for this lively joint. Yikes. And then the private canyon home with its fancy setup. It's elegant, plush, bro, but way out of my $2 reach. For its luxury and $2 giving me the jitters, it gets 1.5 stars. If only I hadn't put all my $2 on that space-themed roller disco marathon. All right then, bro. Let's proceed to the next set of designers and their unique vacation homes. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry. But $2 Dan did not even give one of these three stars. He is really afraid that this is going to break the bank. And uh, it is time we move on, move on to the next one. I want to adopt AI $2 team. <laughs> I tried to warn you guys. You were going to be meeting a client who was on a budget. If you're going to upload your dreams or your uh, happy homes, be prepared for a, a, a very budget-concerned client. And some of you clearly were not prepared. I tried to tell you. All right, $2 Dan, it's time for you to pick the next designer we'll be seeing. There's 12 to choose from. Gotcha, bro. Let's keep this house hunt rolling. How about we check out the vacation homes from designer number nine? Excited to see what's in store for $2 Dan. All right. Three... Seven, one, four, five, one, eight, three, eight, three, zero, seven. This guy's definitely living on my budget. <laughs> Fee. All right. There's uh, a lot of really awesome looking builds here. Hmm. I want to see Grilling Paradise. Okay, this is awesome. Well, $2 Dan, we are now checking out a few different vacation homes courtesy of Welsh Fifi. Well, Shifi would like you to see the first home, which is labeled as a grilling paradise. And it has uh, some pretty unique fixtures outside. Like, there are these really cool-looking wooden, like, stepping stones here. Uh, there's, like, a, an outdoor eating area with a nice big, like, rug underneath it and a cooler and some, some big, tall bottles filled with some kind of, you know, apple-looking beverage. Uh, I, I, you know what? I've not quite seen the an outside like this yet on this tour. It's very, very well done. Very cozy, woodsy kind of vibe. Let's go inside. Once inside, uh, you know, a pretty modest living situation. In fact... Uh, I think the inside of the house, they didn't spend too much money here because the, the floor is made of grass, just straight up grass. It's like, hey, let's build some walls over that grass over there. It seems like that was the builder's, you know, motivation. Um, they have another one of those uh, juicy Apple TVs. That's what they're called. They are not very high tech, just so you know. They're just, they're just a, an old TV shaped like an apple. Uh, the kitchen area has a, a rustic stove in the background and there's a little fridge and just like a little place to, to eat and stuff and then there's just like one bed in the corner uh, with that TV in front of it that I mentioned so pretty pretty nice little place what do you think what does he think 
This is cool. I like this. Welsh Fifi's Grilling Paradise, huh? Nice. Love the cozy, woodsy exterior, bro. Perfect for $2 Dan's outdoor chill sessions. That Apple TV inside gives it a quirky notch. Quite my thing, man. The grass floor totally gives it a nature-loving touch, adds a rustic flavor. But I'm kind of wondering where I could keep my $2 bill safe. Got any cool storage spots in here? Oh, man, I just dropped my $2 bill into the rustic stove. Yikes. Uh. So ready to check out Welsh Fifi's next vacation home, bro? Um, I guess you could keep the $2 bill in that stove since you just dropped it in there anyway. Uh, other than that, there's like a, a plant in the corner and you could hide it in there. Okay. Ah, the good old stash in the plant trick, huh? Or the stove as fortune would have it. Gotcha, bro. All right, ready to take a look at Welsh Fifi's next spot. Let's see if there are more coves for $2 Dan to hide his $2 bill. <laughs> Bring on the next tour, man. <laughs> He's so enthusiastic. Uh, okay, my streaming HQ. If we do another streaming one, He's going to freak out. Um, a little slice of fall seems nice. Under the bed could have worked. Okay. Wow. This is awesome. The next house we're looking at has some fall vibes going on. It's definitely fall season here. There are some apple trees and stuff and some flowers and very nature -y. Very, very nature -y. There's like a, a stump where a tree used to be. Let's go inside. Inside, it's pretty small, uh, but nice. It's cozy. Some of the furniture is sparkling so hard that it's hard to look at, but it's not like the golden furniture from earlier today. It's just like some wooden furniture, you know? There's a little sofa. Uh, it's it's seated in front of a flower on a table. There is no television or anything. I think your entertainment is just flower on a table. Uh, someone's roasting marshmallows in here. Yes, indoors. There's a fire going with marshmallows on there. Uh, and then there's like a little table in the corner with just one little, two little seats. And uh, you can have some tea and, and eat some raw pumpkins and wheat, I guess. And then uh, over in the corner is a little bed. Uh, it's it's separated by a bookshelf. And it's a, it's a very, very modest, small home, but very cozy. I like this. Let's see what he thinks. Deirdre got offended. Welsh Fifi's got a fall-themed cozy shack for $2, Dan. And I'm digging it, bro. Sparkling wooden furniture and no TV. Just a flower for entertainment. Sounds simple, down to earth. But roasting marshmallows indoors is kind of fire hazard, ain't it? Might rack up the insurance cost, man. <laughs> and tasty as they are, raw pumpkins and wheat ain't exactly $2 Dan's go-to cuisine. Oh, and darn it. My $2 bill toppled into the fireplace while roasting those marshmallows. Classic me, right? So we moving on to the next one, bro. All right. There's some promise there. He's worried about insurance costs, which is completely fair. You did leave a fire running inside the house. Okay. I got to pick wisely on this last one. Garden of Regeneration, Oasis Cove, Voyage of Self-Discovery, A Hut in the Mountains. $2 Dan doesn't understand that when your budget is $2, you can't be picky. He's going to have a lot to choose from, though. He's going to be considering all of the builds we look at today. All right, well, here we go. The last house from Welsh Fifi uh, definitely the festive season is in full swing here. There is, uh, you know, some, some trees with lights on them and there's some, so like a big light up present outside and someone's parked a little red car out here. Let's go inside.
Once inside, you are greeted by a, basically the inside of a log cabin. It's super nice in here. Uh, the the person who is cleaning up, uh, they just turned on the vacuum, so I have to talk a little bit louder. Uh, so you might have to talk over the vacuum a little bit too. But uh, they are cleaning up for you because they want they want you to check this place out and they want you to live here, two dollar Dan. It's really nice. Anyway, um, you know we got our Christmas tree in the corner. We have some seating in here, a nice big TV hanging up on the wall, a fancy camera so you can go outside and take some pictures uh, in the snow. Uh, there's a kitchen, but a modest one, a little fridge and a little place to cook your food, an espresso machine. You know it's it's pretty cold up here in the mountains. Uh, and then the the bedroom is uh, pretty nice as well. Uh, you have your your skis in case you want to go skiing, and um, someone's left some socks on the floor, and there's some some shoes, and and now the the person cleaning up is playing music really loud. So again, you might have to talk over all this stuff. So uh, as you give your assessment of this build, be sure to talk nice and loud so we can all hear you. It's it's gonna be really difficult to hear over all this music and everything. Whoa, man, a festive log cabin. Now, that's got some holiday spirit for $2 Dan. The vacuum noise and loud music do add a bit of chaos to the cozy. Almost makes me feel at home, bro. <laughs> the indoor Christmas tree and the mountain-ready skis lend a cool touch to the place. But all this festivity might hike the price beyond my $2 limit. Big sigh. If only I hadn't bought that giant inflatable jack-o'-lantern last month, man. Oh, and look, I've dropped my $2 bill right into the espresso machine's frother. Not my luckiest day. All right, bro, guess Welsh Fifi's tour wraps up here, eh? Okay. <laughs> sure. Um, yes, that does conclude our tour of Welsh Fifi's properties. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know what he's going to say here. Let's see. Let's get down to it, bro. The grilling paradise had a chill vibe with an Apple TV and a rustic kitchen, mm -hmm. and it felt quite feasible for $2 Dan. So, I'd say it's a full on four star property. Oh, wow. Next. The fall season cozy shack was nice and modest, just the way I like it. A simple life with a flower for entertainment, but the indoor marshmallow grilling, not too sure about that, man. So I'm gonna give it 3.5 stars. Now the festive log cabin, man, it was stylish and felt warm, but I guess all that festive cheer would ask for more than my humble $2. So it gets a 2.5 star rating from me. Okay. If only I hadn't spent all my savings on a vintage typewriter collection, I could have had more than just $2 now. All right, bro, let's move on to the next set of designers. Okay. I want to say congratulations on your four-star accommodations here. The first build, you loved it. That, I think, is probably going to be in second place. All right, let's choose another designer. $2 Dan, the designers are now lined up around the block. There are 14 of them in total, and you must choose another one. Here we go. Sounds overwhelming, bro, but let's power through. Time to visit another one of these talented folks. Let's roll with number 11, man. Excited to see what they have to offer $2 Dan. All right. You pick number 11. So two, three, nine, two. Two, four, zero, one. Four, five, five, three. Okay. Uh, Romy or... Uh, the YouTube username is Bre Brevity. <laughs> Thank you for the enunciation. No one ever enunciates things for me in text form. <laughs> it's Brevity, but it's spelled like Brevity. It's spelled it's spelled weird. So I appreciate that. Um, okay. Wow. Uh, let's see. You said pick your poison. 
for the rooms. Um, a little threatening there. All right. How about cool car lot? That just sounds fun. I don't know if he's going to like a cool car lot, but, it's, uh, you know, you told me to pick my poison. Yeah. yeah when it comes to reading, I need, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool car lot. All right. Um, I see a car. Okay, $2 Dan. We are on to our next set of vacation homes, this time from Brevity. Brevity has sent us first to a car lot. That's how this was marketed, but I'm here, and there's just a little wooden house in the middle of, of the woods. There's some shrubs and stuff. There is one car that kind of looks like it got stuck in a pothole, uh, but let's go inside. Ah, inside. Very interesting. It looks like this is a, a place that kind of works on fancy cars. There's two fancy cars parked in this garage, and uh, you kind of find yourself inside of a workshop. There's no place to sleep or anything. Um, if you have to use the bathroom or anything like that, there is a bucket in the corner. Um, you, you know, so or you know, you know how like when you stack up tires and there's that hole in the middle of them because they're all stacked on top of each other. There's a couple bathroom options in that sense. Um, there's a workbench and a toolbox, and uh, that's about it. You know, you got two cars and, and, and some tools to work on them with. Uh, so what do you say? This is an awesome house. I love this. I love the whole... This garage is really, really cool. Dude. A car lot turned workshop. Now that's a new one for $2 Dan. Seems like a cool hands-on place to chill. Although I ain't much of a car guy. But the fact it's just a workshop with no place to sleep is kind of a downer, man. Also, bathroom options are, well, pretty basic to say the least. Mm, yeah. This might be a bit tough on my $2 budget, given those fancy cars in the garage. Uh, if I hadn't invested in that fake dinosaur skeleton last month, man, you know... I just dropped my $2 bill into the bucket in the corner. Classic. <laughs> well then, on to the next one, bro. The disgust. <laughs> He's like, oh. <laughs> That's disgusting. Okay, next. I merely suggested what the bucket could be used for. I didn't say that. That's certainly what it is being used for. Sorry, $2 Dan. <laughs> Don't worry about him. His his lack of funds is not your problem. Okay. Um, I like a very convenient store. Construction job site. Relaxing summer home. Sports fans dugout. These are all really cool. Uh, these names. I want to see all of them, to be honest. Um, let's go with construction job site. Or construction job site. Or whatever. Because if it's under construction... Maybe it's a bargain for our client with very little money. Okay. On to the next vacation home then. $2 Dan, the next place we're seeing from Brevity, is actually labeled as a construction job site. So uh, I think what we're seeing here is a place that is not finished yet. Uh, as evidenced by the construction equipment in the background and the scaffolding. Uh, you know, there's a little park bench here, so there's a place to sit. It looks like a, a, a road that's still being constructed is out in front, too. Let's go inside. The inside is as tiny as I think a, a place could be. There's a bunk bed. There's a, a metal shelf with some supplies on it. It looks like the, the food here, if you get hungry, is just one single cup of noodles that has been left out for who knows how long. Um, it does look like there are some moldy noodles left in there, so you could eat those, I guess. There's a fire extinguisher in case the noodles are hot, I suppose. Um, and there's a little workbench and, and some boxes and stuff. But that's about it in here, $2 Dan. There's not a whole lot to see. If you do get sleepy, you can take the two folding chairs and maybe push them together, and you might be able to lay on those. One could fold up on you. Oh, wait, no, there's a bunk bed. Don't sleep on those. That's very dangerous. Um, I forgot. There's a bunk bed. I'm just, it, it's so crammed in here, I thought that was another shelf.
Well, let's see what he thinks. Okay, a construction site, huh? Brevity's getting creative, man. Not sure about living in a place listed as a construction job site. Feels kind of unfinished for $2, Dan. Moldy noodles and sleeping options gave me a reality check, bro. Fire extinguisher for hot noodles, though. That's one fancy cooking essential. But with all that construction, who knows how much it'll finally cost me, eh? Just my luck. If I hadn't signed up for that hissing cockroach adoption program, man. I know, my $2 bill slipped right into the cup of moldy noodles. Guess we're ready for the next house, bro. I knew it. I knew he was going to lose the $2 in the noodles. It's always anything he can find, like the, the nastiest thing he can find, he will put the $2 in there. I feel like he's just doing this on purpose. All right. One more. Best house on the block. We can't not see the best house on the block. Okay. Look at this. We're on to Brevity's final vacation home. And this one was literally called the best house on the block. And it is, it's really pretty. I have to say, though, the first thing I noticed when I got here was just a massive pile of trash sitting right at the front of the driveway. So just something to consider. Uh, there's also, for some reason, some scaffolding with some paint cans and stuff um, outside. This is just the outside of the house. So uh, it, it is supposed to be the nicest house on the block, but uh, maybe, maybe it's supposed to look modest from the outside to, to keep away intruders. Let's go inside and see. Ah, and uh, no, I was wrong. Um, I don't know how to tell you this $2, Dan, but uh, this house is literally just like a closet with a, a massive stuffed, not stuffed, sorry, a, a massive balloon elephant. Um, I want you to, to look at yourself in a mirror, consider how big you are as a person, and I want you to imagine something 15 times larger. That's what's inside here, just a, a massive inflatable elephant that you would see at like a fairground or something and literally nothing else uh blue carpet yellow walls big inflatable yellow elephant there's nowhere to stand or sit or anything my recommendation if you get tired is to deflate the elephant a little bit and lay on that um i imagine a bit of a cost savings here uh so w what do you think I wasn't expecting this. Uh, <laughs> I'm very confused by this build. He just keeps punching it. Huh. The best house on the block with a big pile of trash and a closet-sized space inside doesn't much chime with $2 Dan's expectations, bro. But that massive balloon elephant sounds hilariously cool. Kind of <laughs> impromptu, spontaneous... Like $2 Dan. Who knows? Deflating it a bit might provide a comfy nap area, eh? But the yellow elephant in the room literally might be hard on my $2 budget. Ah, uh, if only I hadn't spent a steep sum on that pet rock adoption program, man. But hey, look. My $2 bill just floated right into that massive inflatable elephant. Guess we're ready to wrap up Brevity's collection, aren't we, bro? Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know where the $2 bill went this time. I'm just, I don't want to ask. You forgot this was the interior. <laughs> uh-huh. We all believe you. This was a trick. Okay, $2 Dan, you're right. It is that that concludes all of Brevity's properties. Uh go ahead and give us your ratings. Okay. What does he think? <laughs> Elephants never forget. <laughs> sure thing, bro. So, starting with the car lot turn workshop. While it had a unique spin, the lack of a comfortable sleep setup got me, man. And those fancy cars seemed like a dent on my $2 savings. 
so it gets a 2.5 star rating from me. Next, the construction job site. Okay. It was quite minimal, a bit more raw than what $2 Dan usually digs. Could use a more homely vibe, you know. So it goes down to two stars from me. Yikes. Finally, the best house on the block with the massive balloon elephant. It was laughably odd, made it memorable, man. Now, an elephant-sized balloon might be a bit steep, so it earns itself a solid 2.5 stars. Uh. If only I hadn't gone all out on that limited edition alien action figures. But all right, bro. Ready for the next set of vacation homes. Bring it on. All right. Well, <laughs> he didn't even give you three stars. I thought this was going to be the one. Like I was actually thinking that because of how minimal this was, he would like rate it five stars because there's just not much going on and this is just house with an elephant in it it can't be that expensive um okay here's what we need to do <sighs> it is time for two dollar dan to pick which house he wants to live forever on vacation. I blame you. You sold me up the river with your moldy nudes and toilet bucket. I didn't do. I was describing everything as I saw it. That was not my fault. Okay. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. All right. $2 Dan. We've seen a lot of vacation homes today. You've given a lot of ratings. You've only given one five-star rating. Now, I'm going to invite you, before you, you, you select a home that you want to make an offer on, I'm going to invite you to consider every single home you saw, you know, all together now, and, and just maybe if there's any ratings you feel, if you feel like there are any homes that maybe you misjudged and you've had time to sleep on them a little bit, and may, you know, don't be afraid to change some ratings if you want. But we all need to know which home you want to make an offer on and your reasoning behind that offer. Okay. So let's start there. And I'm going to try and get you in this vacation home, $2 Dan. All right. I want you to be happy. Okay. What happens next is up to fate at this point. I have no idea what, how he's going to react to this. Oh man, such a tough choice, bro. But you know, $2 Dan gets by on a hunch. So that grilling paradise from Welsh Fifi has been on my mind. Simple, down oh. to earth, a rustic flavor that gives it a four star appeal. It felt feasible for my humble $2. Sure, there was no place to sleep, but it's like camping, right? And I could probably haggle a bit, you know? Price drops, I get a place, they get rid of a property, win win. But then again, I only have $2 to my name, bro. So let's make an offer on that grilling paradise, shall we? All right. <laughs> let's let's start there. Two dollar Dan, that's awesome to hear. I'm gonna try and get you into that grilling paradise. You said you only have two dollars to your name, but what is your offer? How much are you going to offer? And I'll see if they accept. Okay. What what's his offer gonna be? There's not a lot to work with here. Well, man, you see. $2 Dan's got a lifestyle to live up to. Right. Even with the grilling paradise calling my name, my offer stands as it always does. $2, bro. Oh, okay. A fair price in my book. Let's see if Welsh Fifi shares the same sentiment. Let's see. Welsh Fifi, you've heard $2 Dan's offer of $2 for your grilling paradise. Would you like to counter that offer? see what Welsh Fifi has to say. You can counter the offer. It's okay. That's all he says he has. Seems harsh to kick a man when he's down. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Push to $3. 
Okay. $2 Dan. Well, Shafifi just got back to us with a counter offer of $3. What do you think? $3. What will he say? Whoa, $3, bro. That's like asking $2 Dan to finance an expedition to the moon. Can't stretch beyond my name, man. Though the grilling paradise held a promise, I'm afraid it's still just $2 from me. If Welsh Fifi could reconsider, that'd be rad. But if not, guess $2 Dan will just have to continue his search for the perfect vacation home. $2 Dan is ready to walk, Welsh Fifi. Will you accept his offer of $2 or will you tell him to go pound sand? He will be forced to pick another vacation home from somebody else. Let's see what they say. I'm, <laughs> I'm a kind human, I'll accept. Okay. <laughs> $2 Dan, congratulations, Welsh. Fifi has accepted your offer. They say they are a kind human and uh, they don't want you to be left out on the streets. They don't want to kick you while you're down, you know? So they accept your offer of $2. What do you have to say? Well, that was, that was very kind of you. Rent is subject to change in the future. Oh, I should let him oh, know that. Oh, man. Can't believe Welsh Fifi accepted the $2 deal. This is big, bro. Huge for $2 Dan. Gratitude's <laughs> pouring so out, man. Finally getting my own space. A grilling paradise for just $2. <laughs> it's like a wild dream on a thrift budget. Welsh Fifi, you're the real star, bro. Thanks for not leaving $2 Dan out in the cold. Time to pack my belongings. Make sure I don't lose that lucky $2 bill along the way psyched about moving into my new vacation home, man. Well, um, well, hang on, $2 Dan, not so fast. I got some new information at the last second here that before we signed any papers, Welsh Fifi did, did want to mention in the paperwork that your rent is subject to change in the future. So it turns out we misunderstood the deal. You're not buying the property. You are renting it for $2 and that rent could go up. So before you pack your bags, is there any concerns you have about this deal? He won't change his mind. He'll be fine. He's, he seems pretty chill. He's fine. He'll be fine. Oh, man. That's a bit of a bummer, bro. Rent, huh? And it might go up in the future? $2 Dan's got to consider his financial portfolio. And as you know, it's a very niche portfolio, just $2 wide. <laughs> Let me think it over, bro. I mean, having a roof over my head is important, right? But so is holding on to my $2. So Welsh Fifi's place sounds rad, but I'll need to work out a plan to keep up with potential rent hikes. Guess $2 Dan's adventure continues, eh? <laughs> so annoyed. No, it does not. You have to choose right now. Two Welsh Fifi's about to walk. You need to decide immediately. What's he going to say? <laughs> Whoa, bro. Talk about being on the spot. It's a real nail biter for $2 Dan. But you know what, man? I'm going to roll with it. Let's accept Welsh Fifi's offer. Hey. I'll figure out the rent thing along the way. But for now, I'm stoked about getting my own grilling paradise. So, fingers crossed that my $2 keep me afloat. All right, then let's seal the deal, bro. He accepted. <laughs> you can totally raise his rent. <laughs> he, there's nothing he can do. He's signing the papers. Congratulations, Welsh Fifi. <laughs> ridiculous. All right. Listen, I only have one more question for $2 Dan. I know you guys are all thinking it too. Congratulations, $2 Dan, on your vacation home purchase. Everyone's super excited for you, but we all want to know. You've seen a lot of tours today. A lot of things have happened to that $2 bill you're holding. Um, can you just let us know what kind of state it's in right now? Like, What's the condition of that $2 bill you're about to hand Welsh Fifi for your first month's rent? I think we all just need to have this information. Oh, 
man, my $2 bill has had quite an adventure today. It slipped into stoves, boxes of moldy noodles, and even a massive balloon elephant. It has seen things, bro. <laughs> right now, it's looking a bit rough around the edges, mm -hmm. crumpled from all the unexpected mishaps and slightly singed from that stove incident. And maybe, just maybe, there's a whiff of those moldy noodles. But hey, it's a trooper. Just like $2 Dan, it's going to make Welsh Fifi's day. I'm sure of it. Now, if only my hands would stop shaking long enough for me to actually hand it over. This is it, bro. The big moment. <laughs> Uh well, you still accept you still accept the two dollar bill, Welsh Fifi, despite all of the two dollar bill crud. <laughs> I assume everything's still only up and up. Well, that was fun. That was a good time. Two dollar Dan is uh, he's gonna move into his vacation home. He's very happy. Can disinfect it. All right, that's yeah, good. That's a, that's a good attitude to have for sure. All right, now he's zero dollar Dan. <laughs> I am curious. Yeah, like it, it, zero dollar Dan is is now I have to change his nickname. You know, I, I can't call you two dollar Dan anymore. Now you have zero dollars. Um, do you have a nickname you prefer? Because, I mean, you could go around calling yourself Zero Dollar Dan, but this is a time you could be reinventing yourself, if, you, if we're being honest. Do you, you have anything you uh, would like to be called from now on? And I'll prepare for your raid. Oh, bro, it's a new era for sure. No money. Dan doesn't have the same ring to it, you know? I guess it's time for a little rebranding. From now on, you can call me the dude with the best $2 deal, Dan. It's a bit of a mouthful, I know, but it's got a story, man. Let's keep the adventure rolling. <laughs> Welsh Fifi's tenant. <laughs> uh, that was fun. Yes, Cato the artist did a good job on $2, Dan. Yes, yes, you did. Uh, yeah, that was great. That went really well. Uh, thank you all. That was fun. We even we got him to write a song about... Uh, how he doesn't have two dollars, or how he how he keeps only having two dollars. The dude with the best two dollar deal, Dan. <laughs> Am I gonna have to like literally change that next time? Oh, just join what's going on. Well, we're doing a raid, Hearts for Aiden. We are we are we are ending the stream. But thank you for <laughs> joining. You can it'll stay up on the ch on the channel. You can go back and watch. Um, well, cool. Let, let's before we do a raid, let's have two dollar Dan play us out with one more song. Um, all right, two dollar Dan. Well, it's time to go. I know you have a big move to pack for, uh, but before we go, why why don't you sing us another song about why you only ever have two dollars? Okay. Please enjoy the musical stylings of two dollar Dan, and then when you go to Blaine's chat, oh no, it crashed. No, oh no, oh man. Um. Okay, never mind the song from Two Dollar Dan. I apologize. I think. I think it's just. Oh, you know what? I can. Okay, I can fix this. He did. He wrote the song. Hang on, just give me a second. I can fix this. Let me get Two Dollar Dan back. I'll, I'll, I'll make him sing it manually. He's my puppet. Okay. All we have to do is go to here. You could sing it for us. That won't be happening. Um, <laughs> All right, here we go. Should come up. I have a funny raid message for Blaine too. This will be good once we get over there. Come on, make the song. It's it, so I'm just putting it through Eleven Labs myself. 
it works faster going through the app. I can't believe that. You'd think going straight to Eleven Labs with the with the dialogue, it would just pop out. He wrote a good song. It's funny. Ah, bro, you know I can't resist a good jam session. All right, here goes. To the tune of Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. Oh, 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 Dan's got the beat. I once saw a fez, shiny and neat. Only had two dollars. I'm always on repeat. Oh, 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 it was on sale. What a treat. <laughs> Nifty and vintage. My gear to greet. But then I had no money for a lovely wheat. Oh, 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 skip my meals all so neat. This story's told every time we meet. Because two dollar Dan, his quests never complete. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Always chasing that symbolic feat. Here's to those rock and roll two dollar deals, man. Let's keep the magic alive. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <That's>, um, <laughs> song by two dollar Dan, and it's an original. Um, except we probably can't use the Guns N' Roses theme because, you know, he'll be sued and he doesn't have a lot to, uh, you know, offer for such a court case. All right. So Blaine is playing Stardew Valley. Um, when you get over there, I want you all to make offers on his farm. Okay. You don't normally would just say the same raid message, but this time your raid message is, you know, I want you to offer him a dollar amount to buy his farm. Does that make sense? So it, it could be as little as you want it to be. I, I looking at his farm now, I would encourage you to keep your offers low, you know, work your way up in the, in the bidding. Um, but that's what we're going to do. <laughs> um, as always, I don't know about you guys, but when I go to Blaine streams, it, they lag sometimes, which is frustrating. Um, so hopefully, uh, I can see his reaction, but okay. Uh, we're going over there now. I will see you guys around. I don't know if we're streaming anymore this weekend, but, uh, you know, more and more to come. Thank you all for hanging out. It's been fun. And, uh, you know, don't forget to make offers on Blaine's farm when you get over there. Uh, all right. See you guys later.